sculptor that thinks like the draftsman, he only has to think about line. It's a circular thing. Okay. The sculptor thinks like a draftsman, the draftsman thinks like a painter, the painter thinks like a sculptor. Since I don't start with an idea, I tell everybody, if you don't know what you're doing, you can't make a mistake. My great teacher, Tom Blodgett, was a draftsman and a painter. And his painting started out looking like Jackson Pollock and ended up looking like a Rembrandt. And so you have this transformation. You, he said you have to paint the air before you can, you have to get the whole composition going, the lights and the darks and the, and the, the reds and the blues and the siennas and, the, and get all this happening. And then you start to see the image and you start to, con then once you see it, you can make it up you can be, it can end up looking like a Rembrandt or a Michelangelo or a Sistine Chapel, it doesn't matter. You can refine, refine, refine until it's Baroque. But you start out abstract. You start out totally abstract. So you see, art history has gone from the caveman up through the Greeks and the Romans that had systems to do stonework and whatnot, up through um, where figurative art became academic and then stale and then and then there was the revolution of the impressionism where all that salon system and the stale predictable ugly standard sculptures was sick of them and so modern art is born and abstract art is born and we're and we don't come here for no reason we don't want to create other stale static uh, typical 18th century sculpture, we want to create modern sculpture and so we have to start from the abstract. So we don't think of our image ahead of time, we don't decide we're going to do this with our conscious mind, we allow the unconscious mind to play and that's where the image comes from. If I say to you, draw me a horse, then you're going to draw the horse that is in your brain your Rolodex. As soon as I say horse or mother and child or cat, your brain will start to click, 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 and you'll come up with the best cat or horse or mother and child, and that's the image that you'll draw and you'll put it in the middle of the paper. Whereas if you saw that animal or woman in a cloud, it would be not the horse that you would be drawing, because that horse has its head turned in a certain way, then its mane is blowing, and then one hoof is, is raised, and smoke is coming out of the nostrils. And so that horse, you see, is a unique horse that you only see in that moment. And that horse you couldn't draw, but is given to you on a silver platter when you behold it in the clouds, or when you behold it in the block of stone. And so that horse is unique. And that horse stems from the subconscious. It comes from another way. It's fed to you through different root. We all have these uh, moments in our lives when we look up and we see something. And we see it so clearly. And In the cloud. In the cloud. And we can knock on our neighbor and say, look, you see that up there? Isn't that amazing? And, and they can see the same things we see. Um... The problem with is that the cloud, the wind blows it and changes, and it's gone. But the marble doesn't get blown away. I tell my students to take off 30% of the weight of the block. When you start? Yeah, this, this block had a certain weight. And when the sculpture gets finished, it's going to weigh approximately 50% of the weight of the block. So if the block is 10 tons, I, I know the sculpture at the art center was 10 tons. I knew I had to take off 3 tons, 6,000 pounds, I had to lie on the ground before I even decided what it was I was going to carve. And then maybe another couple tons will come off. But if you get 30% of the weight off having fun because you can't make a mistake, then at least that stone was taken off in a joyful, playful, non-risky. Well, in an in an attitude of exploration of composition, and uh -huh. all you're doing is thinking about art and think about 
volume and how that volume is changing. You're taking away stone, but you're not making anything. You're just taking it away. You're Extracting. composing. You're, you're getting the stone to move. You're creating a flame of life. And out of that flame of life, life will come. You're creating masses that have a thrust this way and a counter thrust this way and then a, a swoosh out this way and an undercut over here. You're creating shadows and Shape. shapes and yeah. areas that are going to catch the light and areas that are going to be in shadow. And, and you're setting up a stimulating surface with lots of textures so that the brain has all this stuff to play with. And then, and so you're just removing the stone in a sort of logical way, but without any purpose. I'm going to wait until I get 30% of the ground and then I'm going to decide what it is that I'm carving. Someplace along that line, I'll see it. I'll just come down here one day and I'll, the light will be hitting it in just the right way and suddenly, ah, oh, I see it. The way you see images in clouds, the way you see images in old pieces of wood, you see something. And when you see it, you're seeing it because the brain utilizes all the available material that's there and anything that's on the ground, it doesn't even consider. It only considers what's left. And out of that what's left, you see the image and then you're right there, you pull it out, you breathe on it and it comes to life. Once you see it though, then the work slows down, right? Or the, the strokes... It, it changes, there's a different way of thinking and a different way of, of, of putting yourself in relationship to the block to carve it. That, uh, that allows, but it's very quick after that because you see in all these cases, you don't see it unless you're right there. And so you're ready to, to blossom, the piece just blossoms out of the stone. So I'm reducing sculpture down to, I only have to make a decision on one line at this time. That's the line I want to make. All the stone on the other side of the line, take away. So you're just carving silhouettes. You're just carving the outside edges of things. You're never carving the volume of the, what's in front of you. Draftsman. You draw lines, line is the nature of the pencil or the pen. And so that's what draftsmen do, they make lines. That's nature of draftsmen. It's the nature of the pen, the pencil. This is nature's volume. For the draftsman, the nature is line. But line alone does not a drawing make. You must make shapes of light and dark in order to build up a drawing. And so the draftsman must think like a painter must think about shapes of light and dark. The painter, when he puts his brush onto the canvas and takes the brush away from the canvas, the brush touches the canvas, it leaves a shape. The impression. You no, know, it leaves a no. shape, a shape of color, because the brush is, is not a point, it's not a line. Oh, okay. The brush touches the canvas and then makes a stroke and takes it off and it's left a shape of color, a shape of color Based that has a value. And so, paint, the nature of paint is shape. Every time you touch the canvas with the brush, you're leaving shapes. And so the painter doesn't have to think about shape because shape is the nature of, sh of paint. The painter must think like a sculptor. And so he must think about volume. He must think, of, and so he lays the brush stroke on the volume of what he's painting. So Van Gogh's chair looks chiseled out, or the vase looks chiseled out by the various brush strokes that are laid upon the volume of what it was when you're looking at when it you're right looking there. at it and you're painting it the yes. paint you have to as you lay that that stroke of of color or you're laying it on a on a volume in your head you're laying it on a volume and so the, the, and it's so the, the same process the painter must think as a sculptor yes the sculptor does not have to think about volume it the nature is volume the sculptor thinks like the draftsman he only has to think about line. It's a circular thing. Okay. The sculptor thinks like a draftsman. The draftsman thinks like a painter. The painter thinks like a sculptor. Okay. So all I'm doing is composing a flame of stone. I'm getting movement into that block of stone.